Hey, welcome back to the Midday Q&A. I'm your host, the Duck Man. <laughs> well, we're back today with a bunch of Q&A questions that people have been asking me. And anytime you've got a question, if it's something really good or if I get asked the same things repeatedly, I try to answer them in video. And today's no different. Right behind me here, we have Gregory, the 1966-67 bus. And things are still up in the air about this. Uh, people have been giving me a lot of wonderful suggestions. I've been asking a lot of questions as to what the numbers are on this vehicle and uh, what year this bus is exactly. Uh, right now, looking at some of the options that are on this thing, it still leads to it either being a 66 or a 67. But the big question that everybody asks is, uh, hey, duck man, what's the VIN number say, which currently I don't have, and then they tell me the other places of where to go look. So let's go ahead and have a quick tour of some of those other locations and uh, let me show you where they are. <laughs> All right, typically on a bus, look in the passenger side door, I don't know what year they started this, but up here on the center console, overhead console, this is where the VIN plate normally would live. You see there's two screws that were in there. One of them was completely gone, and the other one was rusted, and uh, the VIN plate didn't want it to get lost. So I gave it to Mary before she and I made a deal on the bus, and uh, she has it. So I still have to get that back from her. The next thing is people say, well, you know, if you don't have that number, why don't you look at the M code? Well, the M code plate normally lives here. But since these don't belong in this bus, because this is walkthrough backings, and this is not a walkthrough bus, obviously this is not meant for walking through. That may change, though. Uh, I really don't like this box, and it might just disappear. But again, the M tag is not here, and even if it was, it wouldn't be correct for this vehicle. So other people have suggested, hey, you know, there's a vent number, another plate right next to the engine in the back. Let's go have a look. Okay, off to the right of the engine right here, you'll see an area where a VIN plate can go, and currently it doesn't have one. It's also missing from there. And the last place you'd find a VIN number on a 66-67 uh, bus would be right next to the engine tins, and I covered this before. In fact, there's a piece of the uh, metal lane here on the ground somewhere. But usually there's a diagonal slice, about 45 degrees, that comes over this way, and obviously it's missing. It's, it's rusted through. So it's, it's gone. There's no numbers there. So the only thing I have to go by is the plate that came off of this vehicle. And hoping that it's accurate, I guess it really doesn't matter, it just needs to be uh, titled to me and be able to put on the street for me. And that leads to the next question. Hey, Duckman, how are you going to get a title for this thing? And uh, the answer is actually kind of simple. There's a few different ways to do it. First thing is I can take the, uh, the VIN number over to the, uh, the state and have them review it here in Florida. If the thing hasn't been registered or titled in X number of years, they make an exception and they give you a title. Sometimes it's a bonded title and it gives uh, time for whoever used to own it to have that legal opportunity to reclaim that vehicle. So essentially it's like lost property. And sometimes they'll just issue a regular title. And I had that happen once on, a, on a, one of my vehicles. They issued me a regular Florida title on it. Uh, they did not go bonded. She told me it might be bonded, but when she came back with the paperwork, she said the state didn't require a bonded title on it. So I got a regular title, and that was actually for my 65 Beetle. And there's a, a long story on that one you guys have received in the past, but we don't need to get into that. The other option is, is there are titling agencies, and you give them your $300, and then in about a week or two, they send you back a letter, and then that letter is a title in your name. <laughs> Simple as that. Let somebody else do the work. And the last option is, and this works for some people, uh, you can actually send the VIN number out of state, like to Vermont. Because this is a classic vehicle, what, what they do is they have you fill out a form, you send in the fee, and then they mail back to you license plates. So essentially the thing is now registered in your name in the state of Vermont. And there are some other states that do that too. I think. Uh, I uh, could be wrong, but I think Colorado is one of them also. And then there's also the state of Alabama. Of course, the border is only minutes away from here. And if you have a friend that lives in a state like Alabama, these things don't have titles. There is no title on them. So what they do is they just go right on down to their, their local tax office or DMV or whatever it is that they do have over there. They put the VIN number down on the desk and they say, you know, I'm going to register this vehicle. They give them a registration. Then that person can legally sell the vehicle back to me by just writing off a bill of sale, handing me that license plate, bring it back to the state of Florida and I have a title. So yeah, there's a lot of different options that I have to this and there's a lot of different ways that it can be handled. But at the moment, um, I'm really not worried about paperwork. Right now it's getting the rust off of this thing and get it rebuilt. Paperwork is, is well, it's just that. It's papers. And yeah, it may mean everything to getting it on the road, but there's always ways to get it on the road. And I don't even have to break the law. Anyways, <laughs> that's the story behind the VIN numbers and the titling on the bus here. And if that answers some of your questions, and I hope it does. This vehicle does not have backup lights, but I have been informed that some 67s, the very, very early ones, did not have backup lights. And 
And that some 66s, the very, very late ones, did have the flipper style handles on there. So it's still up in the air as to whether or not this is a 66 or a 67. Well, one thing is for certain, whichever one it is, it's right on that cusp. So, I mean, I don't know what we're gonna call it, a 66.5? <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of any other option on it. Anyways, that should answer that. So thanks, you guys. I really do appreciate the questions on this. And if you have any other suggestions as to where to look on this vehicle to determine whether or not it's a 66 or a 67, we'll be glad to get into it and try to figure it out from there. One of the other questions guys have been asking, hey, Duckman, you look like you've been working out. Well, thank you very much. I'm actually not. Um, I did start changing some of my diet. I'm trying to boost my activity level because I sit in the car so much for work, it's been making me fat. I think what might be happening is that I develop fat in good places. It, it becomes good looking fat, except for this freaking belly, which I just started to grow, but you know, welcome to middle age. But I tend to get fat in good places and it makes me just look a lot bigger than I actually am. So uh, <laughs> I will get back into a workout regime and I think if I really push it hard enough, um, I'll be pretty, pretty good shape somewhere in the middle of the summer. So we'll start pushing that soon, but no, I'm not actually actively working out. So for those of you that think that I'm getting bigger or something, I am getting bigger, but not in the way that uh, I want to be proud of. <laughs> That's right. I got a baby in here. I'm 10 and a half months pregnant. <laughs> Well, what's my favorite vehicle, I gotta ask this week? And my favorite vehicle, um, just overall, has always been a Volkswagen Beetle. Simple as it is, it's just that's what I've always liked. That's what I've always wanted ever since I was just a little boy. And when I hit my teens, I first discovered that there was a thing called an oval, which I had no idea. Apparently, I had never seen one before then, but reading some of the early, well, I shouldn't say early, early editions of Volkswagen Trends and Hot VWs came out before I was born. <laughs> but I was looking at some of those uh, magazines from in the 90s and discovered there was an oval and really fell in love with the thing. And I knew for years that I was eventually going to find me one, but I had started building me a 73 instead. And that's that white Beetle. I actually put that together for me and, and I really like that car. I'm probably gonna find myself driving it soon. I had a few for sale ads for it and all I get is just people pushing me around and being assholes about buying the car. So I mean, either you buy it or you don't. If you don't put up the money, then I'm not gonna sell it to you. I mean, simple as that, right? So anyways, I think I'm just gonna drive it around. I'll put a for sale sign in the window. And I think if it sees general audience, uh, people looking at it every day, seeing the thing driving around, you know, running and driving around, being reliable, not stuck on the side of the road, I think somebody will probably make me an offer and take it away. I do need that space in order to work on Gregory. But yep, favorite vehicle has to be an oval windowed Volkswagen Beetle. And uh, in my case, it's actually Eleanor is my favorite car. This right here, this, this is my girl. I mean, no doubt, she is my girl. And I'm very happy to have her, and, and I don't know if she's got an opinion, an inanimate object as she is. I mean, she's not like the Christine movie car, although she's be getting some paint work from Earl sometime this summer. If you haven't checked out Earl's channel yet, you need to, duckshit.net forward slash ccc. And how Earl makes a connection to the Christine movie car, he's the guy that actually did the restoration and full paint job on the Christine movie, char, Christine movie car and did a fantastic job. And, and I love his work so much, and he's a good friend of mine. And I figured um, if anybody's going to do this car any justice, it's going to be he. So he's worked on cars bringing them back from the dead or cars that bring themselves back from the dead. He also did Herbie. Yeah, Herbie's another one such car that always manages to come back to life no matter what. So he's got a Herbie and a Christine, and now he's soon to have an Eleanor, who was a real-life disaster. Hurricanes got her, as you probably know. Anyways, my favorite car to drive at this time is not Eleanor, because, of course, I can't drive Eleanor. But you may have seen me driving her, and that would be none other than... Ruby, that's right. You see Ruby right there behind me. You're probably gonna take her for a ride in a little bit because I have to take a ride off to the FedEx office and drop a couple boxes off. But without a doubt, Ruby is my favorite car to drive. The 350Z right here, also one of my favorite cars to drive. I mean, I really, really do enjoy that car. I, I mean, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. It's a whole lot of fun. But Ruby is a completely different driving experience and I've never been about balls to the wall horsepower or super handling performance. Although some people say that uh, the way I drive Ruby, it seems like, you know, I th either think she's a sports car or that perhaps she's performing outside of the ability she was originally designed for. And I find that kind of funny. But um, 
Yeah, and the car that I absolutely hate the most would be that Nissan Juke that you see back there. That thing is the biggest piece of crap going. And if you have one of them, I'm sorry for you. Really, I am. I mean, you had other options, but if you chose a Juke, that's on you. So, yep, favorite car to drive is currently Ruby. And my favorite car that I think to restore, because uh, I think Eleanor really dragged me over the coals. That one was a really tough one. I think my favorite car to restore is going to be Gregory. Uh, I, don't, <laughs> I don't think there's any reason I'm not going to enjoy restoring this car more than anything else. And I got a feeling I'm going to push through it very, very quickly. The thing about Gregory over Eleanor is he's bigger. And for somebody like me of my size, being over six foot three and, and roughly 260 pounds, yeah, that's right, guys, I got fat. I mentioned that earlier in the video. Being that I can get in this vehicle and I can maneuver and get around on the inside of it, I think it's going to be a whole lot easier to put together and restore than that of Eleanor. And the fact is also working on things like the roof, you know, it's up here where I can reach it versus being way down here because this is about how high Eleanor's roof is when I'm standing next to her. So yeah, will I lower Gregory, I've been asked that a couple times. Some people say, hey, you know, wait a minute, you know, don't lower, don't lower Gregory at all. We'd rather see him stock height. I want to drive this car, and I think that most Volkswagens, when lowered a couple inches, actually perform better. And one of the things that I worry about driving something like uh, a, a Volkswagen bus, they're a high rollover risk. And you probably see the way I drive Ruby, or even if you ever see me drive the 350Z, or best yet, you see me drive the Ninja 250. I throw that thing around the turns, I mean, all those cars around the turns like, you know, there's nothing to it. That was a nice drift, a little action there. Like I'm running around the turn, you know, I mean, I just throw my body right over into it. But the bus, I'm going to worry about rolling that over. So I think that's going to very much change my driving habits. And I think one of the things that I need to do is lower a little bit to lower that center of gravity. Because bus, buses, they, uh, you know, the engine's up kind of high compared to other Volkswagens. The gas tank is higher than the engine, so you're adding that much more weight at a higher level. This thing, of course, does not have a camper top on it, so it doesn't have that extra weight up there. I don't plan to add a can of camper top to it. I also don't plan to high top it. I have been asked that a couple times if I wanted to convert it to like one of the Volkswagen ambulances of the past, but no, I don't want to do that. And one of the other things you might be seeing by looking through the lens of the camera here is that Gregory is not symmetrical. That was brought to my attention by somebody else. He says, hey, your bus is all crooked. What the hell's wrong? Was it hit? You know, was it crashed? And somebody else even commented on it again this morning. But no, he's, uh, he's not. It's actually just the fisheye of the lens. You see, now looking at it here, more centered, you notice he's straight. So he's not actually crooked. It just, it's an optical illusion when he gets way off to the side of the, uh, the camera lens. You see how he kind of looks like he's crushed in here, a little bit pushed in, and this side is all bulging out. It's subtle. But the difference is there. But no, when he's in the center of the field of view, he's, he's straight. So he's not actually a crooked vehicle. Uh, this thing doesn't show any, any crash damage at all. I mean, no crash damage. Rust is one thing, but crash damage is a much bigger deal. And if you have a crash vehicle, it's immediately way crooked. <laughs> There's immediately a lot of straightening that you gotta do. And uh, Gregory here, we don't really have that issue. So he's gonna be good to go. At least I think so anyways. A lot of the discussion on Gregory has been about replacement panels. And everybody's been giving me some wonderful suggestions as to where to get them, but everybody only limits me to one company. You know, go to Wolfsburg West, go to Classic Fab, go to Autocraft. You know, Clocker Home has all these great things. You know, check out this particular vendor. That's great. And, and I know about, in fact, all of those. And very often I'm, I'm shopping around trying to find a better deal for some of these parts. But some of the things like what you get on Wolfsburg West or Classic Fab, you're only going to find them there. I don't believe other vendors resell their product is probably the best way for me to put it. All three of the big companies would be Classic Fab, uh, Wolfsburg West, and Autocraft as far as the Volkswagen replacement panels. If you're going to get something uh, that's of decent quality, something that's going to fit, and something that's of thick enough metal, those are probably the ones that you want to deal with, at least of the panels that I've worked with anyway. Uh, the last time I used some Classic Fab stuff was on that Type 3. If you probably remember, I replaced the floor pans on it. I was just talking to the owner of that car on the phone about, uh, about 30 minutes ago. He and I have a few other projects we're kicking around in the future, and we might be working on that. And there's some other things I'm cooking with, with Gregory right now also that I can't talk about just yet. Uh, there's going to be some more coming up on that. Uh, CT Moog knows a little bit about what's going on. If you haven't subscribed to him yet, you should. I mean, that guy is pushing through subscribers, man. He sub gets subscriptions faster than I get girlfriends. I mean, <laughs> that guy's doing really, really good. Also, restoring a bus, he's got about a five-month lead on me, and we're trying to 
have a little bit of a friendly competition between the two of us. I don't know what the end goal is. I guess the end goal is to both have really, really cool buses. But I don't know if we're going to go for like the better vehicle, who gets done first, who uh, spends the least money. I, I don't know how we're going to handle it. But we got a little bit of a competition going on in that. So for those of you that keep watching our channels, you're going to want to. We're going to be talking about each other a lot. And uh, we'll be moving forward from there. Let's see, what else is on my list today? Oh, the last thing on that list was... Um, the bus engine. I have to dig that bus engine out. It's actually behind. <laughs> Look over here. Check this out. You see this? This is my replacement bus panels right here. There's another washing machine there. There's another washing machine there. That's right. I've been saving up because I knew this bus was coming home, so I started grabbing appliances wherever I could. There might be enough metal on these things to, to restore um, Gregory. I think a lot of it is, is going to be used. There's not going to be a whole hell of a lot left of it when I'm done. But the bus engine actually lives back here currently. I brought it home about two years ago when uh, Boomer was just a duckling. And I keep checking the tarps on it and keep rewrapping it. But it's under here. And this is the engine we believe is a stroker. And the last time I tried to turn it over, it's not seized. It stays dry over here. And it's definitely going to need a good cleaning up, but uh, that's the engine right there. I've kept the water out of it, and last time I pulled the dipstick on it, it had clean oil. So we're going to try to put this engine back together very, very soon in, in an upcoming future video. I might even jump ahead of the game. I like to do the engine stuff kind of last, do the bodywork first, and deal with the engine stuff kind of on the side. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to try to fire the thing out and see if we can get it running. And, uh, well, if not anything else, it'll make a good video for you guys to watch, and I think you'll enjoy it. All right. Oh, one more thing. People wanted that VIN number off of that engine. Maybe we can determine what year it is. But I don't think that engine is original. Let's go ahead and get closer and see if we can get a number. Well, it turns out Gregory is an HO. That's right. Maybe Gregory needs to change his name to Gregorina because he's a hoe. <laughs> We're going to look that up and figure out what year it is. I'll put it on the bottom of the screen here. Uh, I think that's kind of interesting. And I don't think that's the original engine from this. I really don't. It's, first off, it's dual ported. And uh, it's probably going to be a 1600 engine. I don't believe the 1967 buses had dual ports, not yet. And I got a little doggy barking at me. Hey, little doggy, say hi. Yeah, 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 I hear you. All right, we're going away now. He's never bothered me before. I wonder why he's bugging me now. All right, we're going to pull this out of here very, very soon. All right, you may remember from a couple of videos ago all that fun slipping and sliding that I was doing with Ruby on the wet roads. And previous to uh, that video, many times before, I was getting asked what size the tires were, and I kept forgetting to check. But the size tires on here are actually, um, let's see, 165-80-R15s, and that's the closest you can get to a stock tire. I believe a stock tire is actually going to be like, a, a, uh, instead of an 80, I think it's like an 82 or an 83 or something. It's a little far off from an actual number that's real. So that's one of the reasons why you can't get a stock size tire anymore because they now have three digits, three numbers, and that's the way they handle these things. Unless you buy an original Coker tire or something, you're just not going to find them in that size. So that's Ruby's tire size, and I do not recommend these to anybody. I mean, if you're just looking to drive the car around in dry weather, they're probably okay. I think the sidewalls of them are a little soft. You can see the uh, vehicle wobbles side to side an awful lot. And when you're driving it, man, you really feel that. In fact, looking here, you can see it drives on the sidewalls. It actually rubs them, rubs them clean. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, not a big fan of these tires. Really, I'm not. Not at all. Okay, that should answer the tires on here. So, um, I think that's going to end up, I think that's going to end today's Q&A video. Yeah, I'm going to get in uh, Ruby here in just a minute. I got a couple of boxes that need to be dropped off over at FedEx. So, we're going to take a little ride. Thanks for watching. Underway, headed off to FedEx during rush hour. This is when you guys get the most exciting video of me yelling at all the assholes that don't know how to drive. <laughs> I gotta get this camera to sit more level to the horizon. It's on the sun visor and sometimes it holds pretty straight.
couldn't turn the other day because it was too slippery. As soon as I touched the brakes, the whole car started to turn a little sideways. came through the side street at the wrong time. There's no brake in all these cars. Oh my god. Wow, how many are there? Never waited this long here. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna pull in between these here. Here we go, yay! stopping for the railroad tracks. You don't stop for the railroad tracks. You can cruise over those at the speed limit and you'll never even feel them. Nothing but brake lights, why? Oh, we got one guy making a left up there. He missed an opportunity to go. Yeah, at least he went this last time, but he was already so far past his turn to make the lift that he had to loop back. He had a question mark turn. fun <laughs> thanks for watching don't forget to like comment subscribe check out duckshit.net for all of my different social media links and we'll see you next time